Hello all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guides for APT where this time we're going to be taking a look at the scope and focus of tab in APT settings. So let's get straight into this. Now the scope and focus of tab obviously deals with your mount and your focus mode if you have one connected. Um, we'll start at the top and work our way down. Auto connect scope generally a pretty good idea saves you hitting the connect button uh, works fine and and when that selected it'll just connect the last telescope that was connected if it's plugged in and turned on uh, auto hide the meridian flip clock and on your left here you have your meridian flip clock um, simply uh, if you disconnect the scope or you don't have one connected it hides it so it's not there connect the scope and it'll come back so that's what it's got there that's simple enough uh, above horizon check before you go to and just make sure any target you're trying to slew to is above the horizon pretty good idea if you want to image something it's really hard through the earth uh, if you have an lx200 mount from me you may you will need to check this one uh, low level pause after go to's some mount drivers actually report that the slew is finished before the mount actually gets to the final position um, and this can have effect on things like your plate solving and go to plus pluses and that uh, so you may want to put this in here it's just a, a, a time in seconds to wait after the mount reports that it's uh, got to its position before trying to do anything else and you know, I generally set on my normal one I set this to about three to four seconds uh, it doesn't add too much because you're not slewing around too often I don't think then you can uh, adjust your uh, slewing speeds up here with your your button for your M and your S um, it's just the uh, uh, minutes per second or the seconds per second arc minutes and arc seconds per second uh, you can adjust that defaults are one I've increased mine to three and two just to make it go a little bit faster when you're using your buttons to control where you're going Next you can give your scope a name, um, whatever you like. This is stored in the FITS header um, and if you're using a using the scope name in your filing, file naming situation, it will be in there as well. So set what you need in there or leave it blank, it's up to you. Now the mount watch mount tracking watchdog is a good idea. And what it does, it just monitors your mount and you know if a mount hasn't moved as much as APT expects it should in 60 seconds it will issue you a warning that maybe something's wrong maybe you've got a cable snake or something uh, this of course is disabled above 85 degrees in altitude simply because once you get up there the movements get much much smaller and um, it just means that uh, it can report that you're not moving enough but you actually are because the actual movements required are smaller but that's a good thing to have to make sure you haven't got any snags or anything slowing down your mount uh, if you have a mead you may have to enable the tracking fix and down the bottom here is pause guiding on a focus of move um, this is extremely relevant to if you're using an off access guider you will need to enable this simply because if your focus is moving and you have an off access guider uh, the off access guider is going to be moving as well so your guiding is going to go to hell uh, so that's a good idea there or you may have I don't know maybe you've got a scope that vibrates a little when you're um, focus is moving so you may want to disable it in that situation as well even if you're not using an off access guider uh, but generally you're okay unless it's an off access guider now we we'll move over to the other side uh, do you want to auto connect your focuser personal choice but yes it's good uh, if you have a mead focuser connected to an auto star controller um, it will add the mead focuser control section underneath your auto star here uh, i don't have one so i can't do it uh, pardon me if you have an Andrino uh, focuser with a humidity center center uh, you can enable that here and it will give you your humidity readings up the top up here um, then you've got a little bit of focus backlash control um, this is a, a big long subject to get into for, for backlash I'll be doing a whole video on dealing with backlash uh, what you've got to worry about and measuring your backlash and everything else but that'll be in another deep dive video i'll be making soon um, a simple way to deal with at least some of the backlash is to make a final inwards move and that means that when you go uh, change go make an outward move um, 
the scope will move the focus will move past the location and then come back to the point you want uh, that way it eliminates any backlash for further inward moves um, it doesn't eliminate all backlash simply because it's only doing it on the inward side uh, reverse focus a move I've discovered this works different to setting the reverse in my driver um, with this enabled uh, it only affects when you use your buttons here on your focuser move so if you hit reverse in there when you hit an inward move on your focuser here it will actually make an outward move and similarly if you make an outward move it will make an inward move your go to will still go to the original positions on your focuser it will not be reversed um, when you enable it in your driver at least with the ZWO driver it actually reverses even your go to moves so just be wary of that one um, pardon me. now if you've actually measured your backlash you can enter your backlash details in here generally there won't be much difference between your inwards and outwards backlash maybe a step or two uh, generally on the inwards move because you're dealing with uh, gravity pulling the camera and focuser down uh, but that's uh, only if you've measured the actual backlash and you know what it is uh, as I said I'm going in another video with all this at a later time uh, use the APT position counter and what this does is if you've got a um, position here um, where you the offsets uh, the backlash has been set it will actually hide that backlash um, difference from your position here and show you what the uh, focuser thinks it's going to be at um, <coughs> pardon me flop correction is if you're using an SCT uh, it can help you try and correct for flop um, I'm not exactly sure that's been a long time since I've used it, my SCT I sold it um, so the, the inward outward backlash defines what move is needed to compensate for the flop um, so that's how that one works there if you have an SCT um, if you're using an emulated position you don't have one that's actually a focuser that's actually a real type of focuser that doesn't have positions you can emulate the positions uh, for APT and it will create positions there um, remember position and the step size per position so that's all to do with uh, using an emulated uh, focuser and then you have backlash aid uh, that's got, it, got its own video coming up so I'll just leave that for now um, Ivo we need to get a button for this somewhere else it's annoying having to come into sentence to get the backlash aid uh, <laughs> I just thought I'd let you know but uh, yeah that'll be coming in another video later on and that's it for your uh, scope and focuser tab I wish you all clear skies and see you in another video soon take care all